There's one body and one spirit Just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call There is one body and one spirit Just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call Hello, Rock Children, and welcome to the Rock Children service. We're so delighted that you have joined us today. If you are joining us from South Africa, make sure you put it in our chat box. We're so happy that you have been joining our services and our friends in Colombia and Brazil. Welcome to the Rock Children's Service. And of course, all of our friends in the state, if you are in Texas, Kansas, Kentucky, and Missouri, we're so happy that you have joined us. If I did not name your hometown, make certain that you put it in the chat box. We want to say hello to you and welcome Rock Friends. This is a month where we celebrate Thanksgiving, and we're going to thank God. We're going to tell him how wonderful he is. We're going to tell him how awesome he is. Listen, right where you are, I want you to think about one thing that you can thank God for. But each week, we're going to give you opportunity through our social media platforms and through our services for you to put in the chat what you are thankful for. And also, I want you to know that the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, 
that in all situations, we are to give God thanks. So this, this one, I want to encourage you to thank God for what he's done in your life. Thank God for what he's done in your family's life. Thank God because he's good. All right, right, friends, let us thank God this month. See you soon. Hey, guess what time it is? It's time for offering. Yeah, so what are we offering? Offering is a time when we get to love God back by giving back to Him. Do you ever wonder what happens to it? What happens to what? The money. How does it get used? We put it in the bucket, and what happens next? Oh, that's when it gets really good. Really? Why? Tell me. Because that's when the money becomes a part of God's plan. Our leaders look really hard to see where God is at work in the world. He is, you know. God is doing things all over the place, here, there, and everywhere. Okay, so when they see where God is working, what happens then? Well, that's when our leaders know how to use God's money. They use the money to help with what God's doing in the world. And He's doing so much. He's building churches. He's creating places where kids can hear about Jesus. He's helping people during times in their life when they really need God to provide for them. The money we give becomes a part of all of that. Wow, our offering does all that? Yep, when we give money, it becomes a part of God's plan. And with it, God can do amazing things. Because after all, giving is a way to love God back. Hello, Rock family. We are the Gidry family. I'm Marlon. This is Ramika. Marlena. Miles. And Miley. We are so excited to introduce this week's Rock Stars Bible Study Teacher. Come on and stand up with us and clap your hands for this week's Rock Stars Bible Study Teacher! Hello, Rock friends. I'm Pastor Martin here. I'm excited for this month. You know, this month we're celebrating the entire month and we're, we're celebrating Thanksgiving. And so we're going to be giving thanks to God this entire month. You know, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 18, that in every situation we should give God thanks. For this is the will of Christ Jesus concerning us. So this entire month, we're going to be talking about how important it is to give God thanks. So what I want you to do right now, right where you are, if you have opportunity, if you're able to chat, I want you to put in the chat right now one thing that you're thankful for. I'm going to give you a few minutes, a few seconds to actually put that in. Let me hear you. Let me see them come in. God has been so good to us. He's been so faithful to us. He's been been really present with us throughout this entire year and he's a good god and so this is a great time to give him thanks and to tell him how much we appreciate him so this entire month we're going to be talking about giving god thanks and also i want to encourage you that to go to our social media pages and share what you're thankful for maybe post a video of you reciting what you're thankful for or putting a, uh, a message in the chat on what you're thankful for and try to recite 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. In every situation we should give God thanks for this is the will of God concerning us in Christ Jesus. Well Rock friends we're so excited to be here uh, doing this Bible study and so tonight we're going to uh, look at a Bible study where we're going to see that there's so many things that we can be thankful for to God. But in this particular Bible story, we're going to see that we can be thankful to God because he protects us. And that we don't have to be afraid because God is always watching over us. God is always uh, looking out for our behalf. So this particular Bible story comes from the book of Psalms, Psalms 91. And so before we go to the video, there are five questions that I want you to uh, think about as we go through this video. Question one, how is the mighty fortress found? How is the mighty 
fortress found. Question two. When does the enemy attack? Question three. What kind of enemy is at God's command? All right. Question four. God's power transforms his children into what? God's power transforms his children into what? And the fifth question. What does God promise to those who love and trust him? What does God promise to those who love and trust him? All right. Did you think about those questions? Well, now let's watch the video and make sure that you uh, can watch it carefully so you can answer all these questions. I know you're very sharp. I know you're very smart. So I know you're going to get all these questions correct. So let's watch the video. In the kingdom of the living God, there is a mighty fortress, a secret hiding place that is safe from danger. This mighty fortress is found by trusting God. Yes, all who draw near to God by faith find this place of protection and peace. It is a wonderful place where fear and worry are replaced with confidence and courage. Those who put their trust in God Discover the safest shelter. Outside, the world is filled with dangers, including a wicked enemy. This enemy is like a cruel bird catcher who spends his days setting traps and his nights thinking of ways to capture and destroy. But like a mother bird folding her wings around her babies to protect them, God wraps himself around his children and saves them from every trap and hidden danger. God pulls his precious ones in close and guards them. The enemy tries to fill the darkness with terrors, but God's children need not fear the nighttime. Wild wolves, disease, even death itself, none of these things can overcome God's children. Even in the darkness, the light of God goes forth. The darkness can never put out this light, shining as a constant reminder that all who follow God are safe and will find victory over every danger. The enemy not only attacks in the darkness, but in the daytime as well. Even when the sun shines its brightest, the enemy's evil plans fly at God's chosen ones like deadly arrows. But even the cleverest of his weapons will fail. Though disaster may be all around, and many people may fall into the enemy's traps, those who trust in God can stand confidently. The Lord always pulls his children close in times of trouble. When danger strikes, God is their strength. At the Lord's command is a vast army of angels. As part of God's limitless protection, these heavenly forces stand ready to obey God's command to guard his children. Satan and his wicked army of demons cannot defeat the Lord's mighty angels. All who challenge them are sure to fail. Those under God's protection never need to fear. God's power is so great that it transforms his children into mighty warriors. They find victory no matter the dangers they face. If the enemy sends prowling lions, God will shut their mouths. If the enemy sends slithering cobras, God will give his servants the power to crush these snakes under their feet. At God's command, 
Satan and all his forces must run and hide. There is no enemy who can defeat God's children. God makes this promise to all who love and trust him. Call on me and I will answer you. I will stand beside you in times of trouble. God not only rescues his children, but he also rewards them beyond their wildest dreams. They will inherit God's wonderful promise of eternal life. Yes, those who trust in the Lord will live with him forever in heaven. Make the Lord Jesus your fortress and hiding place and receive his promise of salvation. Welcome back, Rock friends. Wasn't that an encouraging video? Isn't it wonderful to know that God is a mighty fortress, that God protects us, that God loves us, that God is strong and powerful? And when we go to bed, we don't have to be afraid because God watches over us. That's a great reason to thank God because he's watching over us. He watches over us uh, in school. He watches over us at home. He watches over us when we're traveling from place to place. God is always with us. He's a mighty fortress. And so that's one reason we can be faithful to God is because he protects us and we don't have to be afraid. All right, let's see how we did on our questions. Let's see if you can remember the questions and see if you were uh, paying attention during the video. All right, who remembers question one? All right, question one. How is the mighty fortress found? Do you know? Put in the chat. The mighty fortress is found by trusting God and drawing near to Him. Did you get it? I saw those texts coming in. Great job. Great job. All right. Question two When does the enemy attack? Give you a few seconds to put in the chat. I see him coming in. Boy, you guys are sharp tonight. You guys are sharp today. That's right. The enemy attacks in the darkness and when the sun shines its brightest. All right. You're doing really good. You're doing really good. But question three tells us a little bit about how we can be protected from those enemies that attack at night. Question three was, what kind of army is at God's command. What kind of army is at God's command? That's right. An army of angels is at God's command. Isn't that exciting, my friends? They're not soldiers like in our great military or police officers that protect us, but God has angels that have great power and great strength that are protecting us from things that we can see and things that we can't see. God is the commander of all these angels. And that's great news, right, friends? I say we can be thankful that God is protecting us. Excellent. You're doing so well. Give yourself a hand clap today. <laughs> Question four. God's power transforms his children into what? What does God's power transform his children into? That's right. God's power transforms his children into mighty warriors. Rock friends, you are mighty warriors. God's power transforms you into a mighty warrior. That's right. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to fear. God has transformed you through his power into a mighty warrior. Wow. All right, last question. Let's see. Put the chat if you got all four right so far. Great job, great job. Let's see if we can go five for five. What does God promise to those who love and trust him? I see them coming in. I think someone got all five right. God's promises to those who love and trust him 
that he will stand beside them during times of trouble. Let me say that again. God promises those who love and trust him that he will stand beside them during times of trouble. Rock friends, isn't that great news? God has made a promise to us that he will stand by us in times of trouble. So when times are challenging, when times are difficult, remember God made you a promise that he's going to be right there with you during those times. And that's why in everything we can give him thanks because he's with us even in times of trouble. Well, my friends, one of the things that we want to share with you now is how you can continue or always be a son or a daughter of Jesus Christ. And this next video is going to show you how you can receive Jesus Christ and be a part of his family forever and always be in his care and always be in his protection. So let's watch this video. What's up, Bouncy? Hey, Dot. I see you're reading the Bible. The Bible? Yeah, you know, the big book that tells us about God, how he made everything, how much he loves us, how he wants us to live, and just how awesome he is. Well, I'm trying to read it, but there's some stuff in here that I just don't get. Like what? Well, this says that everyone sins, and I don't think that I've sinned. Do you know what sin means? You know, like being a robber or something, but I'm not a bad guy. Sin means disobeying God. Have you ever lied? Well, sometimes. What about sneaking around to get away with something your parents said not to do? Well, everyone does that. That's no big deal. That's sin. That's disobeying God. And yes, everyone has done it. But the Bible says that the punishment for sin is death. I thought God was a good guy. That doesn't seem too fair. God is the good guy. He's perfect and he's fair. So he has to punish sin. Well, can't I just be extra good for the rest of my life to make up for all the bad stuff I've done? Didn't you read the good news part of the Bible? No. What's the good news? Jesus. Jesus? God sent his son Jesus to earth to take your punishment for you. He is the only person who never sinned. Not even once? Nope. He was perfect, just like God. So when he died on the cross, he took the punishment for all the sin in the world. Jesus can erase your sin forever. Dying on a cross? Oh, I'm so confused. Okay, let me start over. God loves us. He wants to be our friend. But sin messes up our relationship with God. So God did something to get rid of sin. He let Jesus die in our place. The cross made a way for us to be friends with God. So what do you mean by cross? That's how Jesus died. People nailed his hands and feet to a big wooden cross and left him there until he died. A uh, dot, I'm just a kid. And that's gross and kind of scary, really. Well, that's how it happened. Because of the cross, we can be right with God. Whew, so I'm all good then? Well, you have to choose to live your life for Jesus now. A uh, dot? Yes, Bouncy. But I don't know how to do that. It's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit. Admit what you've done wrong and tell God you don't want to sin anymore. B, believe. Believe that God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven and that you are now right with God. C. Confess. Confess to others that Jesus is your boss and your best friend. This will keep your friendship with God strong. You know what, Dot? I want to do that. I want to make Jesus the leader of my life. You do? Well, you can pray with me right now and talk to God about it. You want to? Yeah, but I don't know what to say. If you want to make Jesus your leader, repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. I know that I have disobeyed you. I know that I've disobeyed you. I don't want to sin anymore. I don't want to sin anymore. Thank you for taking the punishment for my sin. 
Thank you for taking the punishment for my sin. I want Jesus to be the leader of my life. I want Jesus to be the leader of my life. Thank you for making me your friend. Thank you for making me your friend. Help me to live for you now. Help me to live for you now. I can pray this because of Jesus. I can pray this because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome back, Rock Creators. Isn't that great news? How we can be saved and forgiven. And if you made that decision, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to God's family. And we pray that those that already have made that decision, that you encourage others in your family or friends to trust Jesus Christ so they can be in his family forever and have salvation just like you have. And if you made that decision to, today for the very first time, you are saved. And we want to make sure that you tell your parents, tell an adult that you trust, you know, let someone know about this great decision that you made. We're so excited for you, my friend. God bless you. God bless you. Well, our big idea for tonight's Bible study is because God protects those who love him and nothing can defeat God, we have nothing to fear. Now, what I want you to do now, I want you to stand up and we're going to say this together. I want you to say it with confidence. The big idea, let's say it together. Because God protects those who love him and nothing can defeat God, we have nothing to fear. Right, friends, isn't that great news? There is nothing that can defeat God. There's no enemy that's stronger. There's nothing that uh, can stop him. God is the most powerful being that ever lived, that ever is, that ever will be. And he's our father. And so there's nothing that we should fear. All right, our memory verse for this week is Psalm 91, verse 2, English Standard Version. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Now you say it with me. Psalm 91, verse 2. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. My friends, it is so wonderful to know that we are always protected by God and we don't have anything to fear. And so this week, I want you to know that if you can't think of anything to be thankful for, you can be thankful that God will always protect you. And so let us close with prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for being a refuge, fortress, father and trustworthy friend to all those who place their complete trust in you. Please draw us close to you and help us to find constant strength and comfort in you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My friends, this week I want you to continue to think about and write down or put in the chat. Let people know what you're thankful to God for. Being thankful makes God smile. How many of you want to make God smile this week? I know I do. So I'm going to tell him what I'm thankful for. My friends, we love you and we're going to uh, see you next week. Interested in becoming a rock friend on screen? Connect with us here.